Hey, hey, everyone, this is Dan, the GM, bringing you episode 150 of What the Dice. And with 150 episodes under our belt, I am pushing for more ratings and reviews. I would love to know what y'all think of this show. So if you head on over to Spotify, Apple, Good Pods, or there are a few others that give ratings and reviews. Drop us a rating, drop us a review, tell us what you think of the show. And thank you in advance for doing that. Anytime you give us a rating or a review, it helps us grow. And growth is the best thing for us. Well, I'm going to shut up and let you get on with this week's episode. I'm Dan the GM. This is What the Dice, episode 150. And thank you for joining us. We sit in the storyteller's campsite. Across from us, the storyteller and a merchant are bartering and trading. Seems as if the storyteller is looking to acquire maps of the local region. Maybe he's planning on taking a trip. Maybe this is just part of what he does. Well, an hour or so passes by and the bartering is complete. The storyteller smiles as he looks up at us. Well, well, my friends, I apologize. I had many things I needed to acquire for a trip I have planned. It seems as if my maps are a bit dated. Trade routes have changed and what, what not, but uh, you are not here to hear about my travels. You're here to hear about the adventurers. And speaking of the adventurers, Last we spoke, they are still poking around Kazimar's manor, dealing with fey and creatures of the like. Well, it seems as if Kalila's pet, Spider, has come across the first crystal. With opening it up, they are given something more. They are shown terror. Primal terror. Well... The adventurers now must deal with this crystal, and hopefully there will be no side effects. Well, sit back, relax, and hear me tell. In the last episode, you guys got deeper into the strange manner, dealing with Fey aplenty and finding out that the strange key that was given to you talks to you and asks you if it would like if you like the lights bright or like dark testing this theory out you blinded Kalila and Tufei in which Defibulus quickly dispatched of them with his new sniper not new sniper but new scopey silency thingy technical terms there people technical terms as you guys push deeper into the hallway, Hugin begins to freak out as there's something behind the door. Opening it up, you are exposing yourself to the most primal of inner fears. We pick up with the door swinging open slowly, and before both of you is a massive cut crystal that is has black ichor tendrils striking the stone around pumping strange darkness into the walls it is pulsing slowly you can feel the hair on the back of your neck stand up and I need a will save ooh haven't had one of those in a while holy crap my will save sucks 24 a 14 Kalila, you just have to run away as far as you can from this thing. Defibulous, you have that fear strike, shiver down your spine, and then you steady and ready yourself as you are able to force it out of your system. Kalila, I am going to let you roll to mm -hmm. see which direction you run. Oh, okay. If roll a d6. Odds you run north. Evens, you roll, you run south. I rolled a three. 
So you're pushing forward into the unknown. Back to Defibulus. Defibulus, you see the cat run off. She is no longer a hunter cat. She's a scaredy cat. And you have this strange pulsing crystal in front of you. What would you like to do? <laughs> Pretty much. Just a cowardice little. Um, he's gonna size up this crystal. And remember that they said he, that Kazmar said they blunt uh, blunt force would be good on it. So let's see if the setup on that crystal of the rifle would do anything. Okay, give it a roll. Uh, what am I rolling? To hit. Oh, I, I was sizing it up. I. Oh, uh, give me a knowledge. What are your knowledges? Things of knowledge, uh, dungeoneering, engineering, uh, local, and nature. Let's do engineering. We'll default, yeah, for you. Default, yay! 33. With a 33, you study it and you realize that it is cut square, so hitting it square on would be easy, seeing it is not spinning or anything, and you might be able to put an, enough force into a single shot to start to crack the crystal. Without touching the crystal, you can't exactly determine what the density is, but based on what it looks like, is it looks like it might be a version of maybe quartz or a semi-soft crystal. <laughs> Not diamond. Alrighty. Well... <sighs> He will test it out since he's still got two two uses of that silencer left. He will line up a shot dead center of the cube and see what happens when he strikes it with a bullet. Roll to hit. 46. That is a hit. Congratulations, you can hit a non-moving target. Holy hell, I'm better than a stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me your damage. 21 total. The bullet strikes true, and it buries itself in, and then it starts to spiderweb and crack. Then you can start to feel this strange negative energy is starting to pull you into the room, foot by foot. Since I resist it. You can roll a strength. <laughs> Right? 19 flat. You were able to grab the edge of the door frame as this is starting to literally lift you and pull you closer. So you are now holding yourself by the door frame and you can feel your feet slowly leaving the ground. Kalila, I, I need some help here, Kalila. Do I hear him? Yeah, you're close enough to hear him. Okay. Also, question. Since Mugen's still there, can Mugen take a shot at the uh, Christiers? With the missiles? Yeah. Yes, he can. Since he's not a scaredy rat. All right. He will take... Uh, his little missiles will pop out of his back. And he will take aim with a 30. All right. That is a hit. All right. Your missiles. Let me roll a d4. See how many he fires off successfully. We got a three. And they are 2d6 a piece. So, mare, mare, and mare. All right. The first missile does eight. Okay. Second missile does five. Okay. The third missile does four. This crystal is cracked even more, and... Kalila, you don't feel the fear you were feeling anymore. She'll come back hearing Defibulus' voice being like, why did I run? Stupid thing! And come back. As you approach, you can see that he is sliding, or not sliding, he is holding himself by the door frame. His body is lifted and the crystal seems to be pulling him in. All right, in cat instinct, she is going to, since she knows she's taller and heavier, 
and has claws. What kind of flooring is this? Wood or stone? It is stone. All right. She's going to find a groove somewhere that her 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 claws can dig into, wrap her arms around Defibulus's waist and kind of like counter anchor him. And then say, shoot it again. Roll your strength. Rolling strength. I'm going to say Kalila slips on the stone and falls on her butt because I rolled a nat one. Kalila, you are now being pulled five feet at a time towards this crystal. Okay, that action failed. She's now holding on to Defibulus. Would anyone like to try anything else before you are sucked into this crystal? Can Hugin do a spitting web to try and stop them from where he's at? No, he is too far. Okay. Hey, tell the key to shut the door. <laughs> well, the key should be able to hear that. Um, but you guys are in the door frame, so if the door shuts, it will shut on your hand. Oh. You're holding on to the door frame. The fibulous, you could one hand fire this piss this your rifle. The pull is strong enough to where you feel like it would kind of act like a balance to your white rifle, as long as you don't lose grip. I'll give it a shot. One. <laughs> give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Roll to hit. And I have an idea after that. I give you a nat 20. Oh, nice! Okay. As the bullet hits, it hits the other bullet that is wedged inside, and the crystal just shatters and explodes. and you guys just drop to the ground with a, a thud as the room is filled with this black sparkling powder. Defibulous, you notice something on the ground. You notice that some of the crystals have shattered into the shape of bullet heads. You see about 20 of them that are salvageable. The black energy in them seems to just be internal and is not pulsing outward. What would you like to do with them? He's going to kind of... Very, you all right over there? Because, yep, I'm fine. As she stands up. Why the hell did you run away? I don't know. It just terrified me. <sighs> if, um, if I get possessed, stop me from doing something stupid. He's going to very cautiously go for it poke one of the bolts with a finger. Holding her head, she goes, yeah, it kind of reminds me of that swamp tree when it took over my brain. The fibulous, as you poke the coned-shaped, bullet-shaped crystal shards, you feel a slight chill in your finger, but it doesn't hurt. And as you stare at them, you realize they are almost the exact size and dimension of the bullets that you craft. You would still have to, like, put the shell and black powder with them. But these look like they would fit as a bullet. Hmm. Now that's new. What'd you find? Well, the crystal I shot blew up and created bullets for me. I wonder if that's kind of one of those things like the bone dagger. Is that a good thing? Or can we use it to our advantage? Hmm. Uh... That's, I don't know, you ask your god, I guess? I don't know. Took a god, someone else has got to deal with it. He will cautiously pick them up and put them in a little box or something by themselves so they're not just loose. Okay. We'd always take them to Mexi and see if he understands what they are. In this room, as you guys get a chance to look around a little bit better, it's a pantry. Foodstuffs, dried meats. Things that you wouldn't expect a vampire to actually need, but there are racks of different types of wines as well. As, out of curiosity, Defibus is going to see how much this food is actually corrupted looking. You see somewhere the tendrils were stabbed in have some cunes of corruption, but the thing that you notice, which the i is slowly disappearing, is that it looks like the tendrils were pumping this strange darkness through the cracks and crevices of the manor itself, as if it was trying to corrupt the manor. 
like the walls themselves. Mm-hmm. Hey, hmm. Kalila. Hmm. Um, so those tendrils look like they were pumping the evil into the building. Why would you corrupt an entire blasted house? Same reason why you would corrupt, uh, think of it as like holy versus unholy land. It would be my guess. So plant a bunch of C4 around the place and, from, and go to a safe minimal distance? Uh, that would be one way, yes. Uh, but typically you can purify, sanctify. You get rid of the thing, the poison. Think of it as like it's trying to pump poison into the area around it. It's interesting that it's wanting to do it to the manor, not the grounds around the manor. I don't know. Well, I wonder if the idea is, so these fae are corrupted and evil. They lost their tree, right? Right. Well... I don't know if they are like bees or something, but maybe they're trying to build like a new fey hive here or something, and that thing's trying to corrupt the manor so it matches their screwed upness. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Oh, good. I'm good because it didn't quite make sense to me. Just no, I think you got the gist of it. You make the area. It's kind of like, like I said, holy, right? Paladins will want to be somewhere where it's it's pure and holy and blessed by their gods or whatever, and evil demon dark things want to be in evil demon dark areas. Fae are going to want to make this environment match whatever they're doing. So if they're corrupted Fae and they were mentioning about the bone god, yeah, that makes sense. The corruptions. Kind of like the cursed swamp, right? It was cursed and dark and weird look, you know. Same kind of idea. As Kalila's going to stare at where the crystal once was and try and figure out why in the world she ran, especially against her will. Do you have knowledge arcana? I do! Why did I run? Well, roll, and I might tell you. Scroll up, arcana... 25! With a 25, you sit and think about it, and there are several creatures of darkness that have the ability to drive a person to embrace their inner fear and to flee. You know that you actually have something similar when you give one of your howls. She goes, I think these crystals bestow fear into people. I think that's why I ran. You know how like certain creatures can cast that on things? Magic users used to be able to cast like fear and you would go running. Kind of like the mirror. Do you remember when you looked into the mirror in the cursed swamp? Uh, I don't believe that was me that looked in the mirror. I just had to break it. Yeah, but remember how Clyde got scared and ran because the mirror feared him? Yeah, kinda. Same thing. Same kind of thing. What would you guys like to do next? Continue down the hallway to look for more crystals. Okay. As you walk into where Kalila ran in fear, you find another massive room. This one looks more like a kitchen. You see stoves and cu cooking areas and pots and pans and all manner of things. And you see what looks like a doorway it is left open and you can hear something down the stairs. The same high-pitched, squeaky fey noises that you've unfortunately started to become accustomed to in this building. She goes, I think there's another one of those crystals downstairs or a bunch of fey down those stairs. What do you think, Defibulous? Hmm, well... I'm guessing it's probably a combination of crystal and fey. All right. You want to lead the way down this time in case I go running again? Well, just don't get scared this time. I will try now that I know what happens. Are you stealthing down? Yes. Roll your stealths. 40. 30. As you both carefully move your way down, you get down the stairs and the... The idea of this being a hive is actually cemented once you get into the basement. You see Faye whizzing back and forth, 
and the walls are covered in this strange, glowing, viney looking thing. You see small, what look like egg sacs growing inside what look like these vines. And you see about 10 fey buzzing from side to side and they're checking these strange roots and these strange, what look like gourds or eggs that are growing there. It looks like there is easily a hundred or more eggs growing. They don't seem to notice you, but you can also feel that strange pulse of fear just on the outskirts of where you're at, letting you know that there is something, a crystal nearby. Well, um, who would have thought that I would have been right about something nature Yeah, you were definitely right about this being a hive. How many fey can we kind of take that are, can we count that's down here? You could easily count ten that are whizzing back and forth taking care of the different sex. Mm Mm-hmm. She goes, I have an idea. I can cast a couple of spells with fire. And I can kind of put it in the doorway to where they kind of have to fly through it to get to us if they want to. Or I can cast my ball of fire and wall it around, roll it around the room. Oh, we set the place on fire, though. If you want to give me an engineering check, I can answer that. <sighs> that voice is talking to me again. Tell me to do an engineering check. Well, I don't know. Would we set the place on fire, or is this all made out of stone, since it's a basement? 38. Hold on, drop the die. <laughs> I think... Okay. Uh, I think that god guy fell over or something. Maybe. As you look around, and you start to notice something hmm. nebulous. The waters are dripping water. This area is moist and you can't tell if it is a naturally occurring moisture but even the ground that's in here seems to have you know a touch of moisture to it it's very dank and dungeony so no if you casted any type of fire in here it would not set the building above a flame all right so Engineer, structurally, this place you won't set on fire. Everything is very moist, damp, and nasty down there. Hmm. And kind of gooey, I think. She goes, well, then, instead of fire, what about lightning? If it's wet, it's conductive. Mm, your logic is sound on that. You will see, is it enough moisture to conduct electricity effectively? Yes and no. The plants look like they would be more flammable than electrical then there's also the fact of most of the fey are flying so you really wouldn't hit the fey if you set the place aflame especially since you've seen her control that strange ball of fire that might be more the option fire is your better bet but I'm wondering something what do you have in mind Oh, I need my—I need tools to do it. I don't think I have the tools to do it. My idea. What would be your idea, though? Take the uh, sparkle bit cannon. Oh, the sparkle stuff. Yeah. And I don't know—I don't know if we ever determined if the sparkle bits were flammable in their own right. But load it with a pe- uh, the projectile with gunpowder and just sparkle cannon gunpowder everywhere too. It would blind them. I couldn't see through anything when you did that to me. Which would give us an advantage. It would give me a, at least, a, I would guess, a few extra seconds to roll that ball around and hit more of the fey. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me... Are you thinking about finding a way to ignite the sparkle bits as they leave the sparkle bit cannon? Either that or create a giant cloud of them enough in the room to hit the flammable that she could set them on fire with the orb as she's rolling it. Give that or if it's not flammable, it blinds them and I can hit more of them before they come after us. You know what? I need 
a single roll of percentiles from whoever feels luckier. Defibulous. 93. As you two are talking, you happen to notice a glint of something on Kalila. In her ear is a piece of the sparkle. Give me an engineering check. Kalila, can you kneel down just a, mo- just a bit? You will. It will pluck that out of her ear. After he removes it, her ear just in- innately just kind of twitches. She looks like, what did you pull out of my ear? 30... 34? Unless I math wrong? Studying it carefully, it is a strange, dense, bendable, tra- uh, translucent, but shiny material. And you realize, yes, it is flammable. <laughs> oh, excellent. All right, what's our plan? Yeah, this stuff's flammable. Fantastic. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do... Alright, so the plan is... I'm going to fire one in there and then fire a quick fire a second. Because I have, my, I have the quick reload and rapid reload things. Okay, so two shots. Uh, two shots, and then you should be able to throw your ball in there. And that should ignite everything. Uh, theoretically, yes. Or just really, really piss them all off. All Either right. way, we're still doing what we normally do. Now, do you want this so to, to send them flying in flames, I can summon my ball, and then you can rapid shot right behind me. And then it should act more like a spray. True, but it, they may notice that ball coming before I get get that shot off. Okay, that's fair. There's also the idea of, because Defibulous would have thought of this too, because he thought about it, finding a way to ignite the sparkle as it's exiting the cannon. Mm-hmm. Which would be as simple as holding a torch in front of it. Kalila's going to pull out a torch. Eh? I'll make an engineer out of you yet. (laughs) He goes, one moment. All right. I have the feeling that Clyde, wherever he's at right now, just stopped what he was doing and shook his head, wondering why no one's supervising us and the dumb things we're about to do. (laughs) Yeah, there's a face palm. For sure. And I'm pretty sure Faye would have been going, nope, I'm out walking up the stairs. All right, ready? All right, she'll get the torch lit and ready as stealthily as she can to not make the Faye aware of it. All right. And she'll he will hold it out in front of his pistol gun. He will fire the sparkle but cannon and then stagger first shot and the second shot so not to ignite everything as all at once. Okay. I need you to roll to hit, then roll some percentiles, then roll to hit, and then roll some percentiles. I don't need the one in the moment. Okay, the two shots for the hits is a 46 and a 44. Okay. You wanted percentage, percentiles? Yes, I do. All right, first percentile is an 81%, the other is a 100%. So, uh, yeah, all of these, they look like they are bloody. Some of them look like they can't fly anymore. And there is several of these strange egg sack things that are now burning. Fantastic. I can do one more shot if you want me to. Still holding the torch out. Uh, 38. All right. And then roll percentiles. So, 72. Okay, roll damage. 11. Okay. There is a single fey that is bloody and bleeding. That is flying towards you, weapon drawn. Wait, it can see? It's flying towards you. It didn't say it could see you. It knows where the exit's at. So it's heading towards the exit. Not necessarily to hit us, though. Maybe not. You don't know, but it is angry and it is flying towards you. All right. Kalila's going to drop the torch and uh, take at least one shot, I believe, because she'd have to pull out or drop the torch, pull her bow, and shoot it. 
All right, roll the hit. 28? No, that's a hit. Woo! And uh, can you do more than one point of damage? Oh, instantly, yes. Yeah, so this thing just drops to the water and then just disappears into a mist. As you watch these strange plants burn away, you can see that they are turning, they are already a dark green, almost blackened green, and they are turning to this deep, dark, ashened black, and then they turn to a liquid ichor and drop into the water, and the water starts to disappear, and you can feel the pulse of that strange crystal, and I need a will save from everyone. No, not again. Woo, it was better than last time. I have a 19 this time. Okay. 23 total. Kalila. Do I go running again? You try to go running again. She just starts backing up like, no, 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 no. You don't have to run because you're already sev- You don't actually see it, see it. But there's that pulse of primal fear that res- echoes through as you can now see this strange black light coming through the hallway in front of you. She's at the top of the stairs just going, hold on, I just need a minute. I can feel its creepiness. I had to wait, I would just tie a rope to you. She was like, I'm working on it, okay? But Kalila will take a deep breath, remember that this thing can be broken technically easily, and try and come back down the stairs again. As you come down the stairs, the the fear creeps up your spine, but it it's not as bad, and you're able to make it into the room where you see the remainder of the plants are burned away, and you can see scarring on the stone. And you're starting to see something different. There are strange racks with pointed items where hands would go. There are shackles dangling from the walls. There is a foreboding sense of just echoing fear that something happens here that you probably really don't want to put too much thought into as you push in deeper. She's just going to keep mumbling to herself. The first swamp was worse. The first swamp was worse. The first swamp was worse. Defibulous, as you continue on in here, you start to look at these strange devices and you remember there was a very short stint where your parents studied ancient techniques of gathering information from people. Torture devices. This room is full of different manners of torture devices. They are all in good shape. They look like they are cleaned regularly. But you can definitely tell that it gets used just maybe not to gather information. As you push in a little deeper, you can start to see the hallway heads to the east and to the west. And there's a door just as skewed of you that heads to the south. And you can see the dark poles continuing. What would you guys like to do? Kalila will have Hugin remain closer to the entrance, so if he needs to warn us of anything coming, he can. That and she knows he doesn't like the creepy vibrations that this crystal goes off to, and she doesn't want her spider getting possessed by it. This place is just on a on a level of nope. I was like, I'm not paying attention. Let's just shoot the crystal. See, so you don't want me to tell me to, me to tell you what this place is. No, 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 no. I don't. I'm okay. I'll tell you after. That's fine. Just not while we're down here. Otherwise, I might go running like a scaredy cat again. I can always tie your shoelaces together. Here, hold my tail. 
And you told me never to hold your tail. <laughs> she goes, well, if I go running, it'll stop me. You can step on your tail. Okay, that'll work. Just don't attack me for it, though. I shouldn't. If anything, it might snap me back out of it. Would you guys like to peer into the room that is emanating the light? Sure. She'll go behind the fibulous. As you glance inside, this crystal is larger. This one is also shaped. It is crudely cut, but you can still see it. A smooth top with smooth rounded edges down to a sharpened mouth with teeth that are sharpened. A jawline with bottom teeth that are sharpened and eyes in sunk. It is a giant skull. Same crystal but this one is shaped and you can almost feel it peering into you I need another will save oh this time I might have made it I have a 26 alright I rolled a 19 on die you are good 25 you're both good you both stare at this thing and it almost has this feel of it. it is staring right at you you can feel the hair on your neck stand up Kalila you can have that primal fear that is just swelling in your stomach but you steady yourself and you push it out of your head and you are able to fight off the strange fear that is gripping you Yep, she'll just take a deep breath and raise her bow with a very powerful pullback. I'm almost tempted to give you my gun and let you grab bow it and shoot it. <laughs> I don't think that works. Would that work? You could try and find out. I think uh, the, the neg- I'm not sure how the negative would work on that for you, though. Yeah, because I'm not trained in it, but if you walked me through it, I don't know if I would take penalties or not. Hey, Kalila. Hmm? You're good at shattering skulls, right? Yes. With your knowledge of hunter eating images, where's a good place to shoot a skull to break it? She goes forehead. All right. She a point on her cat head, like between the eyebrows and the forehead. If you can make a really good there, it, it kind of spider web shatters. That or aim for the bridge in between the nose. And you kind of will shatter all the bones that are in the center of the face. The Fibulous will make sure that his clip is fully loaded. Yes, want to try? You mean me fire your gun? You've you've got the better knowledge on shattering a skull. I mean, I can shatter a crystal, but I think you've got better skull shattering knowledge than I do. This is a crystal skull. It should be roughly the same if it's in the same dimensions of the skull. It is carved to look exactly like a skull, just much bigger. And your arrow, he said blunt, and I, the, the, the bullet worked on the last one, so I figured it might work on this one. She'll hold, put her bow back and hold out her hands for the gun, going, how do I use it? We will give her a, a quick but thorough explanation how to use the gun. Stance, prop on shoulder, this is how you aim. Yeah. Are you telling her to cast grav bow on this? Yeah, do your woogie thing with the make your bow bigger thingy. She'll see if she can crash, crash, cast grav bow on his rifle. Yes, yes, it works. Oh snap! What am I rolling dice wise? You are going to roll your normal to hit, uh-huh. which is a d20, obviously. Well, d20, and it's plus your dex. My ranged. Minus four. My range minus four? Yep, your range minus four. Because this is a non-proficient weapon. Hey, what, what's your crit range on this weapon, Defibulous? I have to roll 20. Uh, yeah, it's a 20, I believe. Okay, but if I have improved whatever, that only counts on my bow, right? No. Because it's you that has the improved crit 
not the weapon. That means his critical for you using his gun is a 1920. Well, Defibulus is an excellent, excellent explanator. Explanator. Explanation. <laughs> gave good explanations. Because I rolled a 19 on die. That is a critical. Woo! All right, what am I rolling damage-wise? Yeah. It's a D10 standard, so with your grab bow, it would go one dice up, wouldn't it? So, D12s? Yep, just a single D12. A single D12. Yep. I rolled a 10 on a D12. And add your whatever your stuff is and multiply it by four. All right, so we have then 100 points of damage. Halila. Roll your reflex, please. <laughs> oh, God. Um, a, a, a dirty 20. Halila, as this gun goes off, you are sent backwards. Your claws dig into the stone, and you slow down as you just kind of thump on the wall behind you. And the crystal skull just shatters. Raining down shards of bits of blackened crystal. And as it does, there is a strange chanting that is heard. And then the chanting stops as you can feel something natural start to pulse beneath your feet. Something pushing back the strange energies around you. And that is where we end this week's episode. Well, 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 it seems as if Kalila has a knack for firearms. But the thing that curiosity begs to ask, Kazamar has a dungeon full of devices known to extract information. A man who seemed cultured and skilled enough to ask the right questions. Why would he have such items in his dungeon? Why have a dungeon? Well, me friends, I'm sure that Kazimar has much to hide, and the adventurers may end up stumbling across some answers that will bring questions to Kazimar. With two crystals down, we don't know how many more they'll have to hunt down. And Lord knows what the Fae are now doing. Well, my friends, the moon is high, and it is time for us to say farewell. As always, my friends, may the Dice Gods bless your every Roll. We here at What the Dice would like to thank Paizo for creating Pathfinder, Epidemic Sound for our music, as well as Sirenscape for our sound effects. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on Facebook at What the Dice Pod, Twitter at What the Dice Pod, and of course email whatthedicepod at gmail.com. And if you liked our little adventure, please share us with your friends and rate and review us. 